This episode is brought to you in part by Hybrid Light. Durable, environmentally friendly, and guaranteed for life. Visit hybridlight.com. And Sheffield Financial. Specialized equipment financing for work, play, and everything in between. Visit sheffieldfinancial.com. Hey, folks, we're here at Legends of the Outdoors TV. I'm with a really great friend of mine, Bill Cookie. Bill, man, this is a, it's been a while since we got it, the duck it, hunt together. It's been a long time, and uh, especially here at Real Food. I mean, I'm, I'm proud you asked me along. Yeah. It's going to be a fun day. And this guy knows duck hunting, and he knows duck calling. Hey, we're going to see if we can shoot a duck. We're gonna eat good, we're gonna have a good time. Here with Bill Cooksey, hunting with Billy Blakely on Real Foot Lake. Come on back and watch the action. 5 a.m. can't come soon enough for folks like these. There's more than just a job to do so they hit their knees. They sure take pride in everything they do. There's no challenge that they won't work through So they tirelessly keep going on They work their fingers to the bone They spend way too much time in the field and away from home You can be sure they know what all this hard work is for So now we honor you Legends, legends of the outdoors. Hey folks, welcome back to this segment of Legends of the Outdoors TV. I'm your host, Gary Mason. I'm with a really great friend of mine, Bill Cooksey. Man, it's so good to have you on the show. And I know we were talking a while ago about your calling career. You started out at a very young age. I, not in competition. Now, I right. started calling at, you know, two years old, like most, most kids in our, our part of the world. And uh, my dad, big duck hunter, and he's been in the outdoor industry his whole career, or was, you know, when he was still alive. So I grew up in that world um, and have always been comfortable in that world. I missed my first duck in Gene Hill's backyard. Yeah, yeah. Well, as your career progressed, you started doing some, uh, I guess you would call it marketing work for some of these companies, mm -hmm. and and tell us a little bit about what you did and who you worked with. Well, in uh, I believe it was '94, I was selling insurance, and Roy Rhodes asked me if uh, I'd be interested in selling duck calls. And at that point in my life, I said, "Man, nothing would make me happier." So, I went to work selling calls for Roy Rhodes. Um, went from there to. Uh, doing some marketing and some writing for the Hunting and Fishing News, and then to Avery Outdoors, where I progressed up to finally marketing director was my ultimate title there. Right. Well, I know that you went through uh, a lot of the growth patterns that uh, Avery went through when you were there and uh, helped actually helped build that company. You're, you're doing something now, and I really want you to expand upon this because you're, you're working with an organization that's very important to our conservation efforts. And tell us just a little bit about what you're doing now. Yeah, I, I like to consider this kind of the, I don't know about the ultimate goal, but it's it's definitely a perfect move in my life and in my world uh, into the conservation arena as a profession. And I'm working for the Vanishing Paradise Program of the National Wildlife Federation. Uh, most of my work thus far has been uh, in, in educating and promoting coastal restoration and Everglades restoration you know, in the Mississippi River Delta in Louisiana along the Gulf Coast and in the, in the Everglades where there are so many issues. I mean, it would take us three shows to even really get in deep, but in Louisiana, we're still losing a football field of marsh every 100 minutes. Um, and now we're starting to work more and more up the Mississippi River main stem. And I'm excited about getting to work, you know, around home too. Oh, absolutely. Well, I know you'll do a great job with this, Bill, as you've always done. You're a hard worker and, and you've been a very great part of our outdoors industry. It's an honor to call you a friend over all these years. And this upcoming year, in, in 2022, 
you're going to go into the Legends of the Outdoors Hall of Fame and tell us a little bit about your feelings about that. Well, I, you know, when you when you sprung that on me, I obviously wasn't expecting it, and uh, uh, I'm still. It, it's hard to put into words because there again, it's not exactly something I ever even considered or thought about because you have so many iconic sportsmen that I've watched be inducted and I see the names come across, you know, in the press releases and all. And, uh, you know, to start thinking I'm even, that anyone would put me in that company is, is just humble and, and I'm honored by it. Well, you're very deserving, Bill. And once again, thank you for being on our show. And folks, we're gonna take a commercial break right now and we hope you'll come back to Legends of Outdoor TV. Hey, Abby, I want to tell you about a really neat contest that we're running on Legends of the Outdoors TV for our sponsor, Hybrid Lights. Anyone that's watching our show after episode six can go on hybridlight.com and say, I seen the light or I found the light. Yeah. Every episode, we're going to have a hybrid light somewhere in that episode. And when you see it, you click on hybridlight.com and tell them that you've seen the light and where you've seen it at. And that will automatically put you in for a contest where one winner will win a great box full of hybrid light products. Wow, everyone's is lucky. <laughs> they are lucky, and I tell you what, this is some of the neat products. You can charge your phone with these. Wow. They charge, most of their products charged by solar or through a, plugging them into the wall through a USB port or just a straight plug. So hybridlights.com, click on it and find out all about the Legends of the Outdoor TV. I found the light. Tired of pushing that old lawnmower? Don't go another season without the equipment you need to do the jobs that are important to you. At Sheffield Financial, we specialize in helping our customers get what they need. The easy application and fast approval process makes financing your outdoor power equipment easy. Don't go another season without the equipment you need. Check out SheffieldFinancial.com today. This segment is brought to you in part by Mossy Oak. No one knows hunters like Mossy Oak. Visit mossyoak.com. And Frog Togs. Breathable, affordable, and lightweight. Visit frogtogs.com. Hey folks, we're back at Real Foot Lake once again, duck hunting, Billy Blakely's blind. And I'm gonna tell you, I've got a very, very good friend with me here this morning. Abby Joe, this guy and I go so far back, we're scared to tell each other how, how far back we go That's and how right. old we are, but we've been hunting together for many, many years. I served on his pro staff for several years. Buck Garner, yep. Buck, two-time world champion, champion and champion duck caller. This guy right here, not only can he call a duck, he makes some of the best duck calls in the business. I got one for him to sign. <laughs> there you go. Well, thousands of people have used Buck Garner's calls over the years. Buck was the first one to come out with a little call helper. I'll never forget it because he yep. sent me some. And uh, this little electronic call helper would was a coach that you could hold in your hand. And you just push the button and it would tell you, this is a feed call. And then it would do the feed call. And you could learn to do that. That was one of the neatest inventions well, I thought. Thank you. And, uh, and man, it helped a lot of people learn to duck call. There's kids now that's, uh, that's, that's duck hunting because of this guy right here. There's not, old people. <laughs> yeah, well, they got old people too, like us. But not only is he a legend of the outdoors, Hall of Fame member, but he's an icon in the hunting industry. And I'm very proud, Buck, to have you this morning. God bless you, man. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's, it's been a while, Abby Joe. I and, and I are thrilled to have you on our show Real. and have you a part of what we're doing. So uh, thank you very much for being with us this morning. And I'm excited to get to see you hit a duck and, and we're going to get some. So stick around, folks, and we're going to talk more with Buck Garner of Buck Garner Game Calls.
You know, it's just hard to tell people that, you know, you've only got 15 minutes to talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've stood on that stage and I've bawled like a baby. I've had tears flowing down my face with the people that was there. I've laughed. Yep. And there's no way you can go to the Legends Outdoors Hall of Fame and walk out of there and say they didn't feel the presence of God and feel like that they were in the room with greatness. Hey, you know? and you'll have people come up to you and talk to you after it was over and tell you things about stuff you said that you didn't think was important. Yeah. Yeah. But it just struck a chord with them. With something in their life or one of their friends. You know, you just never know who you're going to reach mm -hmm. or who you're going to help because before I had my tongue cut out for cancer stuff, I did lots of church and I've had more people come up to me and thank me and say, you know, we were talking about so and so, and it made me think. You know, I think I'm gonna start coming back to uh, You know what I mean? I'm gonna change, or I'm gonna. It's not a very hard choice to make whether you want to be saved, right? Or whether you want to go to hell. It is. It's just too good a deal. Yeah. And now that I have experienced the death of my wife, I'm glad I'm gonna be going to heaven because I can't wait to see her again. You know, because yeah. I haven't been able to kiss my wife in three and a half years like I did for 45 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. I said, I want to do that again. You know, I want to hold hands with you. you know. Walk in the streets of gold. So you want to be a duck hunter? And I read this at my uncle's funeral, the guy that got me started duck hunting. Mm -hmm. So you want to be a duck hunter? So you want to spend all the extra money you have on boots, shotguns, shells, decoys, and cold weather hunting gear just so you can go spend all day in the blind with a bunch of guys who watch the skies constantly till their necks hurt and their faces turn red from the wind burn and their skin turns like leather from the years of being out in all types of weather conditions. So you still want to be a duck hunter? So you want to get up at 2 a.m. when the rest of the world is fast asleep, drive two hours in the pouring down rain, sleet and snow, scrape ice off 200 duck decoys with soaking wet gloves, then ride three miles down the river to a place in the dark, unload hundreds of pounds of gear, throw out 200 decoys, and sit in the cold, wet blind and watch the world wake up around you. So you want the very best friend that you ever had to greet you each morning with a cold, wet nose and a lick on the hand. So you still want to be a duck hunter? Then God blesses you, my son, because now you are a duck hunter. That's good. Mm -hmm. I have to say, you don't make it sound fun, Gary. <laughs> it ain't fun. It's more than fun. We wouldn't do this for fun. We do this because this is our way of life. We do this but we won't get even with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey folks, I want to tell you about a brand new reel and gun oil created by my friend Jeff Milam called 80 Below. Jeff, tell me a little bit about the product. 80 Below is a product that's built to really withstand mother nature. Anything it throws at it, minus 80 degrees on the cold side and uh, up to 465 high side. Really, if you like to uh, hunt cold weather or fish in cold weather, it's an excellent product. 80 Below gun and reel oil. You gotta have this if you're hunting fish. Man, we've got two of the most wonderful people here with us. We really do. Terry Peterson and his daughter Cheyenne. Of course, two of my favorite lights is the hat light that you're wearing right. and this mammoth light right here. Uh, now, there's something special about this light. Well, everything is a lifetime guarantee and never replace a battery, never buy a battery again. And they're solar powered. Also has the USB ports that are in and out. So you can put power in with your cell phone charger and also then it's a power bank to charge your cell phone. These are the best quality ingredients to get the best product out of it. This segment is brought to you in part by BNM Poles, the leading crappie pole in the world. Visit bnmpoles.com. And Vortex Optics. Life happens. 
which is why Vortex products come with an unlimited lifetime warranty. Visit vortexoptics.com. Get him out front. Get him, get him, get him. Man, I tell you, I can't think of anybody that has anything more to do with the waterfowl hunting or calling than the guys and gals sitting around this table right here. I mean, like I said a while ago, we're with waterfowl royalty right here in this room all together. And so, uh, man, Bill, thanks for being here. You and Buck, this, this is a true honor for me. You know, we spent a lot of time together at calling contests. Buck actually was kind enough to turn the U.S. Open and the Tennessee State over to me. I remember... I think the first two years in a row that I held the Tennessee State, you won the Tennessee State. And the third year, you got up and blew a bad routine in the Tennessee State and was just really down and out on yourself. You, you knew you'd blew a bad routine. And, and uh, I think me and, and Terry Harris talked you into getting into the U.S. Open. You said, no, I'm not going to do it. I, I just don't sound right today. My call don't sound right. Nothing's going right for me. And we talked you into getting in the U.S. Open and you stepped back up to the microphone and blew the best routine that I've ever heard you blow and won the U.S. Open and went on to the world that year through the U.S. Open. Uh, number one, I appreciate being here. Getting to real foot anyway is always a lot of fun and hunting with Billy up here. I've done it several times in the past, uh, it, but being in this group is really cool because, yeah, when I've competed, whether it was Buck at the microphone, you at the microphone, or Mike McLemore at the microphone. Uh, that's kind of the contest I really went to back in the day. And I remember that day well, because there are a lot of times, and I know Buck remembers way back when he was starting out, there were some times you want to get sick on stage, you know. And, and that day, I'd been calling for a while then, and I hadn't had that in a long time, but I wanted to puke when yeah. I was up there. Yeah. And uh, y'all had to talk me into it because I just didn't think I could get anything right. So thanks for doing that. Well, man, I was glad that you that you got back in it, and uh, I know Terry wanted to win that day too. He blew a great routine, but you beat him out, and you beat a lot of other guys, and very deservedly so. <laughs> and Bill, you're you're going into the Hall of Fame this year, and I think Buck gave you some uh, advice about oh, yeah. what what might <laughs> be fixing to happen. I'm gonna give him some advice. When you get ready to go up there, they're gonna let you speak. That's right. And he was talking about anything. As much as long as you, you know, right. But have the good common sense to write out some note. I know you'll do it. Some serious note where you can make it fit, so you don't just stand there and cry for ten minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's a great thing because you get to get up and speak, and you know it's fifteen minutes, but it could be thirty. You know what I mean? But. I say be prepared for it just a little bit better than I was, you know. <laughs> uh, and just relax and enjoy yourself because it's your night. To be in something like that and to be named to it is really pretty exciting. I mean, <laughs> it's a pretty big deal, you know. I mean, who would have thought that you would be going in there tonight because I remember him without the gray beard and all that stuff. You know, <laughs> yep. He was calling the contest and we were... And, Bill was, he was by far and away the best caller, the most prepared, you know, consistent, blew the same way, you know, and he's just sweating bullets, you know, because he really wants to do, he wants to win, you know, and got down to the last round, and the, we we're going to give away four places, and they said, we, we've got a tie, but he wasn't in the tie, he, he was like 25 points ahead. I remember ahead, that, you know, yeah. And anyway, he was so nervous, and... I couldn't say anything to him, but what I wanted to say was, hey man, just relax. If you'll just keep breathing for about 15 <laughs> yeah. minutes, they're going to give that big focus. Yeah, I think the tie was for second and third place, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, never underestimate my ability to screw it up at the last minute. <laughs> so that's, uh, you didn't know you'd do the same way. Yeah. No, and, and, and knowing how much speaking you've done over the years, you know, with seminars and, and you know, game dinners and that sort of thing, when you said that, it really reinforced, yeah, I better actually put some real thought into this and, and put something down because I'll get up there and get lost. The hunting and fishing industry would not be the same without each one sitting here today. And 
and uh, it's my honor to have them here. And Abby, Joe, uh, you're a part of the waterfowl hunting legacy, I and am. you and Tucker both, and and uh, well, she looks a lot better than <laughs> Well, yes, no <laughs> doubt, and and uh, you know. We, we're just proud to have her part of the show because she makes all of us look better. She can shoot too, and so we know if somebody gets a duck, it's probably going to be Abby Joe. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a brand new product created by my friend Steve Mosley. Steve, BioProGreen was created by you. Tell us a little bit about what it does and why. BioProGreen is made from a specialized group of products that helps enhance your food plot. It increases the protein, it increases the biomass, and it will help draw wildlife to your food plot. BioProGreen will enhance your food plots and help bring wildlife to your property. Tired of pushing that old lawnmower? Don't go another season without the equipment you need to do the jobs that are important to you. At Sheffield Financial, we specialize in helping our customers get what they need. The easy application and fast approval process makes financing your outdoor power equipment easy. Don't go another season without the equipment you need. Check out SheffieldFinancial.com today. This segment is brought to you in part by Paris Henry County Chamber of Commerce. For more information, visit parisTNchamber.com. And Mossberg. Safety and safe firearm handling is everyone's responsibility. Visit Mossberg.com. One of, the, one of the first guys that I heard about when I started wanting to come to Real Foot Lake was Billy Blakely. Uh, Billy has been guiding on Real Foot Lake for how long, Billy? 39 years now. 39 years, and he's not but 40 years old, so. Ooh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyed every minute. Yeah. Met a lot of good people over the years. Billy is the head guide for uh, Blue Bank Resort here at, at Sandberg and on Real Foot Lake, and, and we're very proud of Billy. and. Uh, and he'll bring you out to this duck blind. Uh, and Man, he'll bring you out to the duck blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. We ate the point. Yeah. I got him, they said, well, sit right here up on this box. <laughs> you know? So I went, this is not, you know, <laughs> <laughs> He obviously knows where the stumps are. He does know where every stump in this lake is, I believe it. I tell you, one of the most amazing people that we've inducted in the Hall of Fame to me was Miss Pat Peacock. Oh, oh yeah, man, she did everything. Let me tell you, I mean, I held her call in this hand, and she said, "Would you like to blow it?" And I, and and I'm telling you, I am telling you, the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and I said, "Miss Pat, I can't do it. I really, in reality, I'd love to, but I'm telling you, this is duck calling." gold right here in my hand yep. and I said I I won't do it justice by blowing it and so I'm going to be happy with just getting to hold it in my hand. Well that call won the junior world, won the women's, women's world, world and that she won it six times and they said stop. stop you know. yeah. And then she competed in the Arkansas State and won, mm -hmm. competed that night and won the world. They only let her win the world two twice. Two times. And she was the first ever Queen Mallard. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And when I, the last time I saw her, she had Alzheimer's dementia, you know. And her daughter, was Melody, said, but she's not going to know you now, you know. She said, really, I'm the only person she knows. I walked in, she was sitting at that table just looking just blank, and I leaned over like that. I said, Pat, 
his butt. She said, oh, but I can't believe you come to see me. <laughs> it just, it still gives me chills. Buck, once again, it's a pleasure to have you here, and you've had uh, one of the finest call companies in America with Buck Garner Game Calls, and uh, you sold that a few years ago. Tell us about your call company and how that come about. Well, uh, 2014, some guys from Memphis, four guys, came up and said, we'd like to buy your company. And so my wife and I looked at the books and everything, we said, well, this is what we would take. And they said, no, that's too much. We'll pass. I said, well, it's getting better all the time. So <laughs> if you come back later, I'm, I might go up. I may have, you know. And so we did raise the price <laughs> uh, a pretty good bit. But they ended up buying. Anyway, I stayed and worked with them for three years. And then Marlene had gotten cancer in 2010. And they had told us back then that cancer was going to more than likely kill her by Christmas time. It was September when we found out. So we were about three, three or four years into her remission from the cancer. And we just, after our three years were up, we took off and just had fun. And, uh, you know, did a lot of fun stuff, travel, and went all over the country. And, You've, you've been through a lot, and we're glad you're still here with us and, and uh, that we're able to hunt with you. And, and uh, uh, I've spent a lot of time with your whole family. Uh, miss your lovely wife, Marlena, a lot, and I, I know we all do. We've seen her or just about everywhere Buck Garner would be, we'd see Marlena and your whole family, you know. Uh, but, Buck, it's been a true honor to have you here on Legends of the Outdoors TV. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. Folks, this has been an exciting episode to have all these guys sitting around the table. I just want to say on behalf of Abby Joe and myself, we really enjoyed doing this episode. We hope you've enjoyed it. Until next week, God bless, and we'll see you on Legends Outdoors TV. This episode was brought to you in part by Hybrid Light. Durable, environmentally friendly, and guaranteed for life. Visit hybridlight.com. And Sheffield Financial, specialized equipment financing for work, play, and everything in between. Visit sheffieldfinancial.com.